In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace any of the hard drives or the RAM in the HP NV All-in-One 27B2XX. Specifically in this video, I'm going to be replacing the NVMe, the smaller of the hard drives. This is the solid state. The computer also comes with a spinning disk, which can be replaced with a normal SATA solid state if you want to do so at the same time. And again, you can replace the RAM at the same time as well. I'm just going to show you how to get in there and start taking this thing apart. You're going to want to start by cloning your hard drive. Transfer your data to the new hard drive. You can use an enclosure kind of like this, the USB port. You can transfer all your files over before doing the installation. With the new hard drive connected, you're going to want to clone it. I like to use Macrium Reflect. It's a good cloning software. Select Clone Disk. That'll create a pop-up window here. You're going to see your hard drive. Check your partitions and select the disk you want to clone it to. It's the one you just installed. Copy selected partitions brings it down. Hit Next. This is a schedule. I don't think we need to worry about that. Hit Next again. Make sure everything looks correct. Are these your partitions? Click through some of the other options, see if there's anything that you want to enable. And if it all looks good, hit finish. Now it'll ask you if you want to do a backup. There's an option for an XML file. I don't really want that, so I'm going to deselect it and then hit OK. Now you'll see this screen. It's going to start cloning your hard drive, the entirety of the hard drive that you selected on your computer to your new hard drive, and it's going to take a while. Once it's complete, you're going to have another hard drive on your list. This one is going to have a blank space at the back, which is unallocated space. I used the disk management tool to fix this and then promptly lost the footage on how I did that and forgot how to do it and have no more hard drives to try it with. So you're going to have to go and Google search that one, but you need to expand the volume to fill the unallocated space and then you're done. First thing you wanna do with your computer is flip it upside down, put it on its screen and then lean it up against something. It seems wrong, but there's really no better way about doing it. The next thing you're going to want to do is start taking stuff off. You can see I've already kind of done that, but we've got these little feet here, little rubber feet. This is the front of the computer. Two feet at the front. Don't even worry about them. There's nothing below them, so don't worry about it. Out here, you're going to want to peel those off. You can get a fingernail under there or you know, a small blade or something, but be warned that, and you can see here, there's a piece of one. They like to come off in pieces, so be really, really careful as you remove them. You've got one here, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna remove six different feet. Now this, you can see it's already peeled up. There's a sticker on the bottom with all of your crucial information, and you're gonna wanna peel that whole thing up because there are five screws below that sticker. All screws are Phillips head. You can use a PH2 driver and they're not in very tight. So they should come out pretty easy for you. Now I've removed all the screws, but I've left these two here. You want to do these ones last because these are attached to this base plate and they're going to push the rest of the enclosure down and you don't really want to bend that. So start unscrewing these and then you can kind of start snapping all of this edge along here has snaps and a fingernail or like a guitar pick works really well to undo those snaps. You just need to separate it out a little bit, just like that, really. And this will start kind of popping up. Now you can see it's really starting to separate quite well. And so you're just gonna run your finger or a guitar pick or whatever along all these edges and it's gonna start to pop up. And here the snaps releasing and the cover should lift right off to expose another cover this cover's got a couple more screws you got one here one two three four 
from the other side, five and six, all Phillips head. You can use the same bit as before. Now with the screws removed, this plate just lifts straight up. This is your motherboard. You got your RAM over here. If you want to upgrade your RAM, there's two cards there. Processors here. It does appear to be removable, but I don't know how compatible different processors are with this board. I would assume if the computer shipped with one and you didn't get the higher end computer, you might be able to put that processor on this computer, but maybe that's about it. My best guess is this is your dedicated graphics. There's a SATA port here, and you can follow it. It goes over. That's the spinning disk hard drive. And then this is the solid state hard drive right here. What I'm doing is I'm replacing the solid state. So that's what we'll be doing next. And believe it or not, all of this up here is your speakers. If you want to replace your solid state drive like I'm doing, it's one screw right here. You're going to need a smaller screw head, but a PH1 Phillips head does work for this. Real little guys, just be careful. And then the hard drive itself is spring loaded. Ooh, one hand. Boing! And that's it. You can just pull it out. Now you'll take your recently cloned drive out of its little enclosure here and put it in where the old hard drive was. Screw that little screw down, and you should be all set to reassemble. And there it is. Reassembly is just disassembly in reverse. First you'll start with the plate, but before you do, make sure to clean out any dust you find in there. It's quite possible some dust made its way into the computer. Good opportunity to clean that out before you proceed. So this just slides right into place, and then you drive the screws. Again, not too tight, because they weren't too tight to begin with. All right, screws are in. Now you're putting on this bottom plate here. Take note. There's the threaded hole in the speaker, and there's your captured screw. You're going to want to make sure that those two line up with each other, and you're going to want to kind of drive this screw while you push everything else down. So you're going to be doing that a little bit over here, a little bit over there, until it's all nice and level. Now that the two front screws are in, you're going to go around and just make sure all the snaps engage. Nice satisfying click. Oh yeah, and we're in good shape here. Now you can go through, put all of those screws back in, and after that, reapply your sticker and all your little feet. They're not gonna stick the same, but it is the bottom of the computer after all. At this point, you'll plug it in, press the power button on the back, and hope that it recognizes the new drive. Success! And there you go. Windows was previously a 256 gigabyte SSD and now it is the 930 or the one terabyte solid state drive. Much better.